Yeah. And in the incidents we know where people had a visual, it, it did look like a big glowing ball of light. This happened in Rendlesham Forest, a really well-documented UFO case where okay, American yeah. service personnel, uh, they call it Britain's Roswell. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot of evidence that this happened. There's even audio recording of the captain who was leading the, the personnel who were looking into the object at the time. You can hear what they say when they encounter the object. You know, it was a big, I think, triangular, pyramidal shape, if, if memory serves. And it was emitting light. So two of the uh, Air Force service personnel who were close to that object were irradiated. And one of them ended up having to go through a huge, long process to get the Air Force to admit that it was related to these, yeah. to this object. So, through, right. but the reason that, why that's significant is the, the Air Force eventually did, and they paid for his, his medical treatment. But by doing so, they also had to acknowledge and to some extent that the incident happened. Right. So those are a couple of cases where people have saw the object and were irradiated. In these cases of Havana syndrome, obviously no one's seeing the object. But I would also point out that if we're going to look at Skinwalker Ranch, the caretaker, that Thomas Winterton, didn't see anything at the time that he he felt getting massive headaches, getting confusion, all of the same symptoms of Havana syndrome. He wasn't reporting seeing anything at that time or close to a craft. 